Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so yes, as, as per the introduction, I'm going to talk to you about a new study, which is the Connect study, um, where we're aiming to develop digital biomarkers to predict relapse in schizophrenia. And uh, this study will make uh, heavy use of uh, the radar uh, technology. Uh, I'm going to talk about how we're embedding that uh, into our study uh, during the course of the presentation. I'm just going to set the scene uh, first, though, um, and talk about schizophrenia, or actually the, the, the predominant symptom of schizophrenia, which is psychosis. Um, and actually, it's the most common reason for people to uh, make contact with uh, what are essentially severe mental health services, uh, definitely in the UK, but the picture is pretty much the same. Uh, wherever else you go in the world, uh, whether that's across Europe or North America uh, or anywhere else. Uh, and um, schizophrenia is characterized by these relapses into psychosis. Um, and this is actually very costly as well for health systems because often it results in unplanned hospital admissions. Um, so assessment and treatment is very time sensitive. So what we do know is that if you can intervene early enough, um, you could either delay uh, or make less severe or even sometimes prevent uh, the actual relapse itself. Uh, and we know there are early warning signs, markers of relapses, but there are actual some real challenges in doing this. Um, and these challenges are essentially uh, understanding who, 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 which individual is going to respond to which treatments and under which conditions. We don't really have a good handle on that. Um, we find it very difficult to actually measure and evaluate changes in the mental health states, um, particularly when part of the problem here is you're asking people to uh, recall their symptoms over a long period of time. And we find that decisions about treatments are, are based on, uh, as I said, individual self-reporting and recalling those symptoms, uh, and then perhaps a, a clinician uh, completing a standard diagnostic assessment and measurement. But these, again, are subjective to particular clinical impression, and you find there is uh, a, a wide variety of, of uh, uh, inter-rates of reliability uh, problems across this piece. I should also say as well that um, one of the key things about uh, a relapse into psychosis and the early warning signs is they're quite heterogeneous. So they will vary between person to person. Um, but what we also do know as well is that for any particular individual, um, that relapse signature, that collection of symptoms, actually remains consistent um, throughout their lifetime and uh, the course of the disease. So just to broaden this out, very much what we really want to do here is to apply uh, the P4 medicine concept uh, to the management and uh, monitoring and treatment of schizophrenia. And um, very much what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it uh, so that individuals are participating in their care. Um, we're trying to make sure that uh, treatments are personalized uh, and early warning signs detection is personalized because as I said, uh, those signs vary between individuals. We really want to try and be predictive because we know if we can detect those early warning signs, then we can do effective interventions. And that again, leads to the prevention side of things. So what we're doing very much fits inside the P4 medicine model. Um, but there are some significant problems as well of implementing early warning signs in practice. Uh, so there's no agreed way to do this. So NICE in the UK is the body that would uh, typically recommend how to do this. Uh, there is no guidance there. Um, the quality of evidence from various RTV, RCTs uh, evaluating effectiveness is, is quite low. Um, and also what we find as well that we miss early warning symptoms because of the nature of delivering these services. Uh, there's infrequent contact with uh, clinical clinicians and community services. As I already mentioned, uh, it's, the relapse signature varies between person to person. Um, also, because of the nature of the disease, we find that people disengage from uh, contacting services, 
but also disengaged as well from medication as well. And quite crucially as well uh, is, uh, is the concept of fear of relapse. And this is uh, where people become very agitated uh, because the relapse is such a, 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 an awful event uh, that actually becomes like a very traumatic episode for it. And actually is, is shown to be predictive of relapse itself. So, um, as uh, was mentioned in the introduction, we've been looking at this for quite some time, uh, and we started doing active symptom monitoring. Uh, first, Jet had the idea back in 2009, and we demonstrated that this is uh, feasible, and we validated uh, our clinical assessments uh, through continuous monitoring through smartphones against clinician gold standards. Uh, and we've done that validation piece. And so we, we know that the active symptom monitoring is effective. And one of our most recent trials, which was known as uh, Empower, uh, which just completed in 2022, um, where we actually combined the active symptom monitoring. So that's participants answering questions on their phone to self-rate their symptoms. Combined that with a, a relapse prediction algorithm and an appropriate care model. And uh, we had people in a study over a 12 month period. And what we showed uh, was actually in the Empower arm of this RCT, uh, we were actually able to reduce relapse uh, by about 50% compared to the treatment as usual arm. So actually the, there is a, a model here that we know works uh, and can achieve that reduction in relapse. But one of the issues here is actually um, how do we start to personalize? How do we reduce the burden of active symptom monitoring and bring in passive symptom monitoring? And how do we make the algorithms more effective at actually picking up early warning signs? So I think uh, uh, obviously um, doing the active symptom monitoring with passive symptom monitoring, whether that's uh, on the phone or whether that's through a wearable device, we can elicit patterns of behavior. Um, and actually what we're probably really interested in is how these patterns of behavior change for an individual and how those changes are actually those biomarkers of early warning signs of relapse in schizophrenia. And this is the, the really the, the, the idea behind uh, the CONNECT study, which is basically um, to think, well, actually, how can we combine these different types of data collection to build better prediction models? Um, but also what we know as well is, I mean, there, there, there are a number of different smaller studies in this area that have looked at using active and passive symptom monitoring uh, in schizophrenia. But um, often the problem with these studies actually is they're not adapting over time. The sample sizes are quite small. Um, they're not looking across a broad range of uh, patterns or symptoms. And so when we put the proposal together for the Connect uh, uh, study, we, we basically said what we want to do is we want to do a very uh, a, a study with wide breadth, so large numbers of people, uh, including diverse backgrounds. Uh, we want to do this very deeply, so we want to have uh, passive and actively collected data across all the ranges of uh, things that we can actually collect. Um, we need to have very high resolution as well, so we need to have uh, high sample frequency across a number of uh, the different variables where that really matters. So the key thing for the Connect, it's almost our mantra, is breadth, depth, and resolution. So um, Connect was funded by the Wellcome Trust, um, and it kicked off in November 2022. So we're still in the very early phases, and we're still very much in the technology development phase. Um, but there are two real objectives, and this is to develop a personalized risk prediction algorithm uh, to estimate short-term risk of psychosis relapse using uh, dynamically collected data. Uh, and then the second one was actually, can we uh, look to see how we might balance passive symptom monitoring with active symptom monitoring and whether actually we can apply an adaptive approach to this so that we only need to do the active symptom monitoring if passive symptom monitoring detects 
um, some signs of change. So Connect is a big study. Um, so it's actually going to be a cohort of 1,100 people. And it's a purely observational study. There is no intervention here. So basically, we are collecting large volumes of data across a very large cohort of people with psychosis within the UK. Um, so actually, I mentioned short-term prediction of relapse. Well, it, this is a bit more specific, actually. We're planning to do it on two different time frames. One was in the next seven days, and one within the next 28 days. Um, and you see here, just a very simple schematic of the, pro the, the Connect project. Input data feeds into algorithm and gives us a prediction of relapse. So I've mentioned uh, the types of data we're collecting. So we're doing this in essentially three different ways. So we're doing active symptom monitoring through a smartphone app. Um, and people will be self-rating their symptoms. Uh, I won't read through the list there. We're doing passive data collection from the smartphone. So all the things that radar can give you, uh, we will be collecting from the smartphone. And we'll also be integrating a wearable device um, and collecting uh, different things around sleep, physical activity le le levels, uh, and uh, physiological measures such as heart rate and uh, breathing rates and skin temperature. So <clears throat> we're going to be doing this across uh, both uh, uh, for the smartphone, across iOS and Android. And for the wearable devices, there are going to be three that will be included in the study. One will be a Fitbit, and one will be uh, an Apple Watch, and one will be a Samsung Galaxy Watch. And obviously the Apple Watch and the uh, iOS smartphone app uh, are paired, and the same for uh, the Android-based devices. So we plan to develop the algorithm, uh, analyzing individual patterns of activity, and as I said previously, principally the changes in those patterns uh, to predict the signs of relapse. Um, so, uh, as this is a large study, so a cohort of 1,100 people um, with schizophrenia um, is uh, a complex cohort to recruit and retain, but we're doing this across five different, uh, six different sites um, across the UK, um, uh, covering um, uh, Scotland, England and Wales, uh, and you can see the sites there. I won't spend too much time talking about this in the interest of time, um, but participants are, are uh, enrolled in the study and they are uh, uh, participate for a 12 month period. We ask them to do active symptom monitoring three times a week. Uh, passive symptom monitoring is ongoing. Um, we have monthly check in phone calls for uh, clinical assessments. Uh, we have a final clinical assessment. And also what we're doing as well is we're doing case note review of electronic health records to identify periods or instances or relapse events. Uh, and that way we'll be able to label our data, both the active and passive symptom monitoring data, with those relapse events, which is necessary for building the relapse prediction model. Um, so uh, in order to do this, we're building a, a single app so there will be a single app for iOS and a single app for Android users uh, that will do both the active symptom monitoring and the passive symptom monitoring. Um, um, and just looking at the types of data we're planning to collect, you can see there, uh, for those of you familiar with radar, it's the common set that you would find uh, across the uh, APIs provided across Apple uh, and Android devices. Uh, but also we have the information available to us from the, the wearables. And you'll see there is a little bit of overlap is there as well uh, between uh, what the phone collects and what the wearable collects, uh, which will make a nice uh, sub-study to see how reliable collection is across the two. Um, we think engagement is going to be a real challenge. So this is 12 months. Uh, and the uh, because it's an observational study, there is no intervention, no treatment. And so we've come up with a range of different uh, uh, ways of engaging people. Um, so obviously we're doing user-centered design with our lived experience advisory panel. So they're actively involved in the design of the app. 
Um, but we're looking at various different uh, personalization features, uh, engagement features, uh, such as streaks, badges, uh, fun facts, inspiring quotes, just to try and keep that adherence going, as well as, of course, the technical check-in and the support. So um, we are using the radar platform. Um, uh, typically, mostly as the back-end data collection system, but we're also using the passive sensing uh, uh, capability. And we're using it in a slightly different way in that we're integrating it into an existing app that we've developed for active symptom monitoring. Um, so that presents uh, uh, some interesting and uh, useful technical challenges, but we're working with the Hive on developing this. Um, and uh, also as well, integration of the uh, wearable devices, obviously the Fitbit's already there in red, uh, but also looking at the integration of the smartwatches and a bit more underneath the um, Google Fit and of all, uh, also on Apple devices, health kit, and also something uh, that's relatively new from Apple, which is sensor kit uh, that gives us uh, access to high resolution data uh, across a range of different sensors. Um, so this is uh, what our infrastructure will look like in terms of how the data will flow um, from participants through the radar system, uh, both passive and active data. Uh, it will uh, all be collected at the University of Manchester in the radar-based deployment. Uh, we will have REDCap for collecting the clinical assessments. Uh, this will be linked and prepared um, through standard processing pipelines and fed into uh, what we term a model development sandbox uh, where the uh, machine learning and statisticians can start developing the model. Um, obviously, we have spending a lot of time as well uh, around security and information governance. Uh, this can be quite sensitive data and there's a lot of this data as well. Um, so we have to follow through uh, the uh, requirements that our NHS partners expect us to do, uh, such as the DCB assessment, um, and obviously uh, penetration testing, vulnerability scanning, will all take place before we finally go live. Um, then just finally, um, I mentioned this before, um, we're really quite interested in well in how we balance frequency of active symptom monitoring and passive symptom monitoring to try to reduce the burden in this cohort and actually we're collecting data um, throughout the study and developing this adaptive sampling algorithm as we call it um, to actually manage that trade-off um, and see if we can uh, understand um, when we need to do active sam sampling or when we can manage alone with passive symptom monitoring. Uh, and this is essentially the proposal of how it would work. Um, you can see across this uh, graph that we do regular sampling uh, at fixed intervals. Uh, our proposal will be to do adaptive sampling. And as you see, as the symptom severity starts to peak, we would start doing more active symptom monitoring. Um, and that's uh, the Connect study. Um, so hopefully um, you've got uh, a good grasp of it, but I'm very happy to uh, answer any questions uh, that you may have.